Thank you for watching this online class presentation from Cedarville University. Cedarville graduates are equipped to succeed in a highly competitive professional environment. Our 98.5% placement rate affirms their success. We invite you to learn more at cedarville.edu. What I want to do is to give you an overview of 4,000 years, and I'm going to do it three ways. First of all is with the PowerPoint up here on the screen. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add hand motions and movements to the whole story. And then the third way we're going to do it is one of you is going to come up here and lead the whole class through it, okay? So participate, pay attention, concentrate, and don't take notes, just watch and listen. You ready? So, <clears throat> 4,000 years Old Testament history, the way we're going to start out in the first 11 chapters of Genesis is just by assigning some key words and phrases. So, I'm going to ask you next time, the key word for chapter 1 is, and you're going to have to say... Creation, okay? The key phrase for Genesis chapter 2 is special events of creation. God really uh, drills down and tells us all that happened on day number 6. Then, Genesis chapter 3 is the story of the fall of Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Chapter 5 seems really useless, genealogies, but again, they are incredibly rich theology once you understand what they're all about. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8 are Noah and the flood. Genesis chapter 9 is Noah after the flood. And chapter 10, just like 5, genealogies. Chapter 11 is the Tower of Babel, and chapter 12 is the call of Abraham. Now, God calls Abraham out of a place called Ur. It is on the southeastern side of the Fertile Crescent. What makes the Fertile Crescent uh, that is that there are mountains to the south where you cannot travel. Excuse me, there's a desert to the south. There are mountains to the north. The Tigris and the Euphrates and the winds from the Mediterranean make this the only area over there where you can travel and live and farm. Right. So God says, leave your uh, home in Ur. Go to the land I promised to give to you. And that, of course, is the land of Israel. But of course, you cannot, one guy can't possess the entire land. You have to have a family to do that. So God gives him a son of promise. Now, he has two sons, but the first one is not the son who was promised. His name is Ishmael. The second one was, his name, of course, is Isaac. Isaac also has two sons. The first one, again, is not the son who was promised. His name is Esau, but the second one was, his name is Jacob. Jacob is really prolific, and he actually has 12 sons. Uh, and they all go down into the land of Egypt where they stay for 400 years. Now, while they're down there, they become enslaved. And so God raises up a leader, Moses, who goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Pharaoh looks at him and says in perfect Hebrew, no way, Mose. Right? It's, <laughs> it's in there. Not everybody knows that, but now, now you do. So God brings 10 plagues. Moses leads them through the Red Sea and into the wilderness where they get the bright idea of sending out 12 spies. Now, when these spies come back, two of them say, yes, we can take the land. Ten of them say, no, there are big guys up there. We, we can't do that. And so the rest of the people get scared and they say, no, we're not going to do it. And God says, mm, you don't trust me. I don't trust you. No, you are not going into the land. So everybody who voted no dies off over the next 40 years. God raises up a new generation, a new leader named, Mo, named Joshua. And Joshua leads the people through the Jordan River and into the land of Israel and divides it up into 12 sections. Now we're ruled by people called judges, last for 400 years. We have a series of social, economic, political, and spiritual ups and downs. People say, man, we are so tired of the instability. What we really need is a king. God says, okay, you want a king? I'll give you a king. First king has one syllable. Second king has two syllables. Third king, you see the pattern here? <clears throat> Three syllables, corny, but you'll remember it, okay? When Solomon dies, the whole thing is cut in two. The number of tribes in the north are ten, and the south are two. The country is called Israel and Judah, and the capital is Samaria, and the capital in the south is Jerusalem. That lasts for a couple hundred years until the year 722 BC. The king of Assyria comes south, grabs the 10 northern tribes, carries them away into captivity, never be heard of again, 
sort of. I say sort of because even though those people weren't heard of again, some of the godly members of those 10 tribes migrated to the south, and so we haven't really lost the 12 tribes of Israel. Then in 586, uh, Nebuchadnezzar comes from Babylon, comes over and he smashes the temple flat in Jerusalem, grabs the two tribes and a remnant of the 10, and carries them back into captivity where they stay for 70 years. At the end of that time, God raises up two leaders. One is Priestly, his name is Joshua. The other is Royal, his name is Zerubbabel. Now we really like this guy for a number of reasons. The first is that when he comes back, he rebuilds the temple out of all the rubble which had been left <laughs> before. Seventy years later, God raises up one of the shorter men in the Old Testament. <clears throat> he rebuilds all the walls. 400 years later, Messiah comes. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is add the hand motions to it. So I want you to mimic and stay with me and, and put your fingers up and get them ready to go because if you don't do that, it's like saying, ooh, please pick me to lead everybody else through it next time, okay? <laughs> so you ready? Get your fingers up. We're going to start with the pinky finger. Genesis chapter 1 is? Very good. Genesis chapter 2, special events of creation. Genesis chapter 3, the fall of Adam and Eve. Chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Chapter 5, genealogies. Very good. 6, 7, and 8, Noah and the? Flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, very good. If I put a 1 here and a 1 here, it's like I'm building the Tower of Babel. Genesis chapter 12 is a call of Abraham. God calls Abraham out of? Ur. Yeah, did I tell you? If you can't remember, just say Ur, and you're right. <laughs> God calls Abraham out of? Ur. Ur, and says, pack your? It's a very important theological term. Pack your bags. <laughs> Walk around the fertile crescent to the land I promised to give to you. Right, there he has... Whose sons? First one is not. His name is Ishmael. Second one is his name is. Very good. Isaac also has. First one is not. Son of promise. Name is. Second one is name is. Jacob has. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, two ears. Add two ears to it. Everybody add two ears. Okay. Twelve sons. They go down to the land of Egypt. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Did you say? Did I even lay out the map down here? I didn't do that, did I? I got so ahead of myself. Take that map and lay it right down here. Right. So we got the Tigris and Euphrates moving over here. We got the Saudi Arabian desert in here. We got the Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, and, and the Dead Sea there. Israel is here. Mediterranean is here, just like what you're seeing up there. Okay, so this is Egypt and wilderness. Okay, so now get back to it. They come down into Egypt where they stay for 400 years. Uh, towards the end of that time, God raised up a leader named, goes to Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh says back to him in Hebrew, Oh, way, Mose. Very good. Okay. So, God brings 10 plagues. Moses leads them through the Red Sea and into the wilderness where they get the bright idea of sending out 12 spies. Two of which come back and say, yes. 10 come back and say, no. People say, no. God says, no. very good. Everybody's going to die off over the next 40 years. All right. So, God raises a new generation, a new leader named Joshua, who leads people through the Jordan and divides the land up into 12 sections. Yeah, now we're ruled by people called judges. Last for 400 years, we have a series of ups and downs. That's right, social, economic, political, and spiritual. People say, man, we're tired of the instability. What we really need is a king. Yeah, put your little crown up there. That's good. All right, we need a king. So God says, okay, first king is, and then, and then, very good. Solomon dies, the whole thing is cut in two, right? Number of tribes in the north are? 10 and uh, is, uh, the country up here is Israel and down here is the capital up here is Samaria and very good lasts for a couple hundred years until up here this country is called Assyria the year is 722 king comes down grabs the northern 10 tribes carries away in a captivity never to be heard of again sort of very good over here this country is now called Babylon the year is 586, Nebuchadnezzar comes around, smashes everything flat, grabs the two and the remnant of the ten, carries them away in captivity where they stay over here in Babylon for 70 years. At the end of that time, God raises up two leaders. The first one is Priestly. His name is Joshua. The next one is Royal. His name is 
who comes back and rebuilds the temple out of all the rubble. rubble. Very good. Very good. So uh, 70 years later, God raises up Nehemiah, rebuilds all the 400 years later, Messiah comes. Good job. Good job. All right. You guys are getting a, a good start.